Today's episode of The Buzzer is brought to you by Sparrow Labs and... Sean's dad, who took all of its college <laughs> funds, which means he had to go to... What school did you go to again? Concordia. Concordia University. <laughs> now enrolling. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I like his little sound effects in the background. <laughs> On today's episode of The Buzzer... Aquaman is saving the planet one beard at a time. And a relic from your childhood just turned 30, and you are officially old. Netflix is going to make decisions for you. We've got some Stranger Things and Stranger Lawsuits and God Save the Queen slash Tina Fey. We've got a super accurate and serious Game of Thrones recap, a marvelous world record, as well as a Star Wars news that you never asked for. Plus, ladies and gentlemen, as a special guest, we're joined. 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 We're joined. <laughs> Plus, as a special guest, we're joined by former NBA player Andre Wade, and we're going to break down all things basketball, folks. Oh, and we also have another guest, my buddy Dom. Oh, he's boy. not famous, but he's here. Too. I was the guy that broke his leg. Never mind. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> all that and more. <laughs> Yes, he was the guy that broke my leg. <laughs> All that and more on today's episode of The, the Buzzer. Buzzer. I start very strong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you came out hot. Right, quick, quick promo. You came out hot. Uh, so, JD. I just wanted to say, we appreciate all you folks listening out there and in yeah. podcast land. And we appreciate LimeWire more. We do obviously. appreciate all of our LimeWire listeners. And Napster, of and, course. And, yeah, that's right. But yeah. we just want to say, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, please go on to iTunes and leave us a nice little five-star review. And maybe maybe just uh, drop us a nice little note of encouragement. Sure. Or My money. Mom did. Or, yep, notes, money. All the above. Yeah. And so that'd be great. And if you're not having a good time, just be cool and leave one anyways. Thanks. That'd be great. Thank All right. you. All right now. Bye-bye. Well, we are off to a rowdy start because <laughs> we're joined by... Oh, at least some quality guests here. Quality guests quality here. and quantity. It, and we're... Well, we're also following... That's this a bad joke. Like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I meant because he's tall, but, oh, okay. you know, I'm, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of voices on today's episode. Obviously, you Correct. guys are accustomed to the likes of JD and myself, Sean, but, but we're joined by two... Very interesting, but very uh, different guests. One was a former NBA player. <laughs> what does that player. mean, Sean? What does tell that mean? Me. Yeah, Sean, what does that mean? Please, what? please tell us. <laughs> well, uh, and as racially of detail as possible. <laughs> <laughs> one is black and one is Hispanic. And He's one. Black. And that's right. And then one is Andre and one is Dom. So <laughs> let's start this over. I love it already. This is that's how you guys keep all of that. Yeah. yeah. It's all good stuff. That. That's good stuff. So we are joined by a former NBA player and we're joined by a comedian. And uh, let's go ahead and give you guys proper time to introduce yourself. But we're going to start with you, sure. Dre. Andre Wade played in the NBA. And then what up? you have also oh. been an entrepreneur. You've Absolutely. navigated the world of sports and business and all around your gregarious dude who knows how to network. So, Dre, tell us a little bit about yourself. What have you been up to? What are you doing right now? Inspire sports, all that good stuff. Yep. Thank you, my friend. Um, the main thing that that I do uh, is, is branding, talent, business worldwide. And of course, there's a lot of people watching, a lot of people listening mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, I have helped put in position to be who they are. Uh, first and foremost, I'm very proud of that. Um, also, um, I've helped build a foundation um, that I'm very proud of for the homeless. And mm, in, in, nice, in, 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 I started in New York, of course, right? Sure. Because it was really cold there and you're like literally listening. You can listen to the news and they're like, oh, five people died tonight. Mm-hmm. Right. So uh, that's one of the things that I, you know, really hang my hat on. Uh, I'm really proud of, you know, helping build that with a couple of gentlemen, um, in New York. Shout out to my people, HHBMG, Hollaback Music Group. Shout out to people repping their style. Shout out to all my guys um, back in Brooklyn, the Bronx, in New York, uh, Rock Nation, Def Jam, all my good people. Nice, man. Um, been, been working in and out of the television, music, and entertainment industry, uh, multimedia industry for a couple yeah. of years now, um, as well as my my latest project is building Inspire Sports. And right. Inspire Sports was something that me and a couple of the uh, former professional athletes and still current professional athletes decided to get together and do. And we, we really wanted to inspire uh, the children 
to just live healthier lifestyles. Uh, Through our experience as athletes, we learned a whole bunch about what to eat, what not to eat, when to eat, when not to eat. You know what I mean? Um, You know what it's doing to your body, what it's doing to your mind. And we were trying to give it back to the younger generation. So we decided that in the cities that. You know, there are teams, which is darn near, you know, most cities in, 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 in America. We wanted to go to the major cities and do inspire sport camps. And, you know, with that, of course, uh, naturally it built a whole, uh, you know, there's there's gear. There's a whole bunch of initiatives coming yeah. um, and just partnering with people to keep the inspire, you know, dream alive. Totally. And I don't want to, I don't want to pretend that there was only one impetus to that, but I know that, and we can probably get into this a little bit more as the show goes on, but I remember part of your story is you got a very severe staph infection correct? that hospitalized you and nearly killed you. Correct. And this was a catalyst for uh, at least changing nutrition. Um, tell us a little bit about that and how you, how that kind of helped you navigate. Right. Um, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, let's say 17 years old, I, w- I was always interested in health. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, I was one of those very health conscious kids, um, you know, doing push ups in the room, sit ups, sure. all mm-hmm. that good stuff before I you know, really knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? I'm like, I want to be healthy. Um, fast forward, like you said, to um, I'm 24, catch a staph infection, staph infection, you know, darn near kills me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I flatline for a Serious couple of, stuff, yeah. couple of seconds on the hospital bed. Um, fast forward to that situation, coming out of that situation and the doctor telling me and my family, uh, you know, oh, you know, his blood will have sepsis in it. Uh, his lungs may collapse. His heart may stop beating in a week. You know, I was really um, I don't know, like you said, it it, it, it set a fire in me. It, it started something different in me that wasn't there before. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Before it was just like workout. You know, I was a college player. Coach says go work out. I was like work out. Of course, I, I, I loved athletics and, and keep my body in shape. So I stayed in the gym naturally by myself. But I didn't dig deep into what's actually going on inside of me. Right. You know, right. what's going on in my heart? What's going on in my blood? Mm-hmm. What's going on in my brain? After the doctor is saying that, yeah. you know, all of these things may stop working because of one situation that happened to me, it made me, it, it piqued my curiosity. Totally. It made me dig into, you know what? I don't really know what's going on. And of course, that's so the the next thought was how many people really know what's going on with their body every day? Right. Put things in perspective. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, yeah. and, and you obviously have a very inspiring story and, and, and I'm sure we're going to get lots of inspired inspirational nuggets as you and I had coffee a few weeks back. And that Absolutely. whole thing was just like a, like I Thank was just you. blown away. Thank you. bro. So Dre, you're, you're here for inspiration. And then on the other side, we have how's Dom. He, how, how's he going to follow that up? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 like, four, like four or five times during that whole thing where I was like, I thought of something. And I was like, dude, I'm being total. <laughs> I'm going to be a jerk, dude, if I say anything <laughs> stupid right now. <laughs> we so, kept it serious for you. Yeah, so it was good. Your, man. Now's your turn. <laughs> I mean, um, so, I mean, so Dom, give him a little bit of background here because you've been trying to get on this show for a okay, while. Okay, I've been trying to get on yes, the show you here. Have. Um <laughs> And, and okay, Sean. every time, so okay, so every time, like whenever it's been brought up about me coming on, Sean has always expressed a little bit of trepidation because I'll be honest, I have a little bit of a potty mouth, and uh, Sean feels <laughs> potty like mouth. I, fun, Sean feels like I can't control myself, and I will say this uh, for all of you so listening fun. out there, um, they're trying to distrust the media. I'm going to read to you a little bit. I don't know if you guys are aware. Okay. Dude. I know I'm not supposed to read this, but I'm going to read this. Sean sent this to me earlier this morning. I had wow. to sign it in order to come on yeah. the show. Okay. Um, it's a contract uh, so that I don't say bad things. Uh, I, Dominic Michael Griego, henceforth referred to as Dom, will agree and comply to the codes and conduct as laid out by Sean Milhouse Richards. Let's start. <laughs> henceforth referred to as Sean or Seanifer. In regard to the manner of speech in which best represents Sparrow Labs Incorporated and its daughter companies, i.e. the Buzzer Podcast, Underground Turtle Fighting Inc., and the now defunct Panda Murder LLC. We don't talk about that one anymore. As such, Dom agrees to abstain from the following list of words. My gosh. The K word. I don't even know what that one is. Oh, man. Sean, did you mean K or did you mean C? 
I don't want to say the C word. I, I think, already, no, don't say that. I, this, is, this is the best show I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> I mean that sincerely. No offense to any of the other people that ever interviewed me. This is just, this is great. Oh, sorry, the contract isn't done. <laughs> All of our listeners are done listening now, so just, 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 just I think just I reeled them in. <laughs> Failure to comply with the following agreements will result in the immediate action of Sparrow Labs Inc. involving the immediate censoring of aforementioned speech producer, and billing of damages commiserate to twice the amount of sponsorship dollars received for the episode in which Don was involved. So two times zero is still zero. Uh, this contract is binding and will be held up in a court of law, and oh. vengeance will be done. Um so yeah, I signed off on that. You take another drink. <sighs> Andre needs another Damn drink. <laughs> you're the worst. You're the, you're the one that worst. you're the one I that did, did the not contract. Like that and you know it. You're the absolute worst. <laughs> it was it was actually so in the much. addendum. It was like that one's fine. I literally hate you so much right now. <laughs> Oh, Dom. I regret being on the show. I cannot wait for you to move to Wisconsin. Okay. Okay, uh, so now in the actual uh, words of Sean uh, Jones, let's jump into the show. What do you say, gentlemen? Yeah. Let's do it. Let's, yeah, just, right. let's just go ahead and do it. Gosh, I was going to have a field day editing this. <laughs> wait, what are you going to edit out? <laughs> There's nothing to edit. There's At nothing to edit. Point, oh, my gosh. At this point, we're keeping it. For the record, that was your brainchild. <laughs> Man, Dom, that was great. <laughs> That was I that, feel like twenty minutes that writing was, at this point. That was like that was like Richard Pryor great. <laughs> like real talk, bro. Thanks, buddy. I might be your biggest fan. And that's okay. You might be my only fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you, get, one, um I remember when I was in Florida and uh that's where I started doing comedy and I went to get coffee and this one guy was like, dude, you're dumb, right? I was like, Yeah. I was like, Do I know you? He's like, dude, you you're the comedian. And I was like, this doesn't feel right because like, <laughs> I do comedy for like 50 people at a bar on Tuesday nights. And I was like, you shouldn't be recognizing me, sir. <laughs> Pop Pop culture. Culture. That'll work. That'll work. Oh, let me get my my bearings straight here. So <laughs> I feel like we ended the intro. So not that this next section is uh, racist or, you know, racial by any demand. Here, anyway. But this yes. whole show has not been anything but racial this whole time. <laughs> I want to talk about Ben and Jerry's ice cream real Judy quick. I came in here, wrote a clean script. I wrote a clean, clean outline. <laughs> I wrote a clean script. just crapped all over it. This is my plan B script. So now I can basically say whatever Watch I want. Trying to talk about ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love Ben and Jerry's. All right. They got like a million different flavors. So. 420 was uh, two days ago. Easter was yesterday. 420 was two days ago. Blazer. And maybe in sports later, 420 blaze up. For, in sports later, I kind of want to talk a little bit about if marijuana should be legalized for pro athletes. We're not going to talk about that yeah. right now. But with Ben and Jerry specifically, here's what they did. So on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, what other forms? Not Snapchat, but on those three. Basically, on 420, they called on Congress to expunge prior marijuana convictions. They wanted to point out as a company that black people are disproportionately punished for possession and that, quote unquote, it's hard to celebrate 420 when so many people of color are still being arrested for pot. Now, with that being said, specifically, are brands like this. So we had talked a little bit earlier about how Gillette had stood up and they had done the whole ad on uh, boys will be boys. Was and they ad. wanted to talk about masculinity. And yeah, so many people now in this culture, 50, 50, right? You either got offended because they're saying too much or you thought it was very endearing in the fact that, okay, they're standing up for political goodness. Right? So what are y'all's thoughts on specifically about Ben and Jerry's and them trying to stick up for racial justice and injustice and the fact that they were saying that white people are kind of being praised now for actually the legalization of marijuana and black people are still being prosecuted for smoking it. Do you guys think that an ice cream company should be using, I put um, this kind of like, you know, staying woke, right? Like, are they just doing this to, I don't know, have more clout for their ice cream or are they actually doing this because they have people that are in PR that actually like agree with this. Like, is this something that companies should be doing? Well, and why do people get so upset about it? Because I do feel like it's the right thing. I definitely want to kick it over to our guests. Here. Yeah. But my, my initial thought is I think if you have a platform <clears throat> and you have a message you believe in, you should absolutely use your platform mm-hmm. for that Great. message. Uh, I, I, I think that there is a double standard in our country. And I think especially when it comes to race it is very much a, uh, 
precedent that started with the war on drugs. I mean, it probably started before that, honestly. But the war on drugs, I think, really exacerbated a situation where you had a number of of uh, men and women of color who were being unfairly uh, preyed upon. And all the while, you're, they're absolutely right now, mm-hmm. as legalization happens across the board, mm-hmm. as we see all the medical benefits and mm-hmm. all the things that's opening up, all of a sudden, the narrative has changed to exactly. look at these white saviors. And mm-hmm. that that is disparaging. Yeah. And so I, I appreciate, I don't care if they're an ice cream company. I yeah. don't care if they're a, a health services company. Mm. I think that if you see injustice, you should identify injustice. Exactly. And, and I kind of really care. I don't even care if it's like to be recognized as like woke of like hopping on the, even if it, worst case scenario, even if it's like hopping on the bandwagon of like, we want to be recognized as a woke company. So we're going to, I'm like, part of it's like, Hey, are you trying to do something good? Yeah. Like, Same I don't really, I don't really care what your motivations are. Right. Like you're doing something. Yeah. yeah. All, 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 all I say is somebody had been in Jerry's likes chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I could count on this guy. Dude, I, I felt like I had to tread so lightly this entire thing. I was like, I I'm like just go serious, dumb. <laughs> show, go show, serious, dumb. So, show me, show me. Show. I don't know. Fine. I don't know what Ben and Jerry are doing, but they got some chocolate. <laughs> they got some chocolate fudge in their bedroom. All right. <laughs> all right. That's what. That's what it comes down just to. Just a hollowed out. Pint. She's like, you. You better say something. <laughs> I'll, I'll give a f- you. You better say something. I'm gonna be on that ass. You know, I love y'all sisters, but y'all know it's true. Y'all know, y'all know. Oh, dude, that's look, so funny. Look, all right, we got a relationship. All right. I think that's the funniest thing that's been said this entire time. <laughs> hey, that that's that's all, man. You know, somebody, somebody, somebody got some brown sugar, and you know, brown sugar, let them know. That you know, if you want to keep me, <laughs> you better you better say something. The guy just comes in disparaging into the office. That's, it's that's like, sisters. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like stop <laughs> stop playing. Y'all know how y'all do. Y'all know y'all be running the whole show. We go outside. You know, we dress up. Obama. He's like yes, and um, you know. So what we want to do is have uh, health care reform because Michelle is whipping my ass every night. <laughs> That's pretty, that's, that's that's pretty much how it works. Do you guys imagine like do you, like white dude walking into Ben and Jerry's on Monday and it's like, "What's up, Carl? How's your weekend?" Oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> exactly, uh, guys. I think we need to have a talk. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. Eat a Charisse. <laughs> exactly. So, not not to shift gears too much here, but this is an example I think of uh, healthy awareness and healthy response by a company. And then this is another example of raising awareness, but I'm kind of confused by it, JD. The whole thing seems a bit odd to me. <sighs> so Aquaman. Aquaman, a.k.a. Jason Momoa. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Momoa. Yeah. yeah. He shaved his beard. Dot, dot, dot. I do, too. To raise awareness yeah, good. about the environment. He posted a video of him shaving and show co- showcasing the need for recycling aluminum on Instagram. Hmm? Not a real story here, but I mean, how how does this? Uh, I guess it was Earth Day. Maybe he's trying yeah. to do an Earth Day thing. I, I, that's my only guess. But is there like they, some biblical roots I know. or Did Samson? What is correlation? <laughs> I was hoping maybe one of you guys had some insight. I have an idea. Okay. But one, of those, <laughs> one of those things. It's not funny. It's just an actual idea. I'm like, are uh, razor blades made out of aluminum? And it's like, if I'm going to keep doing this. Boys will be boys. Am I right, Gillette? Boys will be boys. In, 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 in am the I right, Gillette? He was using an electric razor. Oh, well, then he's full of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, what, what? It just seemed like a stretch. So is he is he saying that facial hair is dangerous to the environment? Is the question here? I I don't know. What? Wait, it, I'm lost, guys. I, it, Why did yeah. he shave his beard? We in don't the know. First place. Question is pubes on the list of words I can't say. You can say pubes. Okay. Um, he well, can me- say pubes on the show. <laughs> okay. Um, he shaved his pubes. He, he shaved might, his well, face. Kind of looks he does like does shave his pubes. Yeah. How would you know that? Did you sit on his lap? Did you know? (laughs) I was like, this is not as as bouncy as I thought it would be. (laughs) So side story about that. You were were working at Game of Thrones event here in Austin during South by. And and Jason Momoa was there. Correct. The the dude was the, what was his name in Game of Thrones? Cal Drogo. Yeah, Cal Drogo. That guy. Count Chocolate. That dude. Mm -hmm. Aquaman was there. And what was going on? He he was looking at women and making them... uh, Happy and uh, you know, oh, they were, it was hot, it was sweaty. <laughs> so, um, nice save, dog. <laughs> so, 
as he was doing that, he was also taking those same women's men and putting them on his lap. And he was shaking them like babies, which made me very uncomfortable. I thought about. And this guy's huge. Childhood. He's a big dude. He's like the rock. Molestation. Size. It looked like he was molesting grown men in front of me. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should fight him because he's like big and strong. You call Ben and Jerry's or on this one. exactly. Sorry. Or if I should just stand there <laughs> or if I should just walk away with their women. Because now their women look at them as women. I didn't know what to do, guys. Now I I'll want to be honest for a second. I know you were very, you were very adamant about I, like I ain't gonna sign this lap. I wasn't, but you're also Andre Wade. You're yeah. also so, I mean, man. I mean, yeah. So, 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 so not even be funny. Would you sit on his like if the option was presented to you, sit on Jason Momoa's lap? Am I getting he, paid? He is no. He is gonna bounce you for a little free? bit. Yeah. I don't think I have the desire to sit on any man's lap. Exactly. Especially the desire. Unless, unless there's money on the line. Especially when his knee is sweaty. Well, yeah. Santa Claus, yeah. I mean, at least Santa Claus gave me diffs. Yeah. You know, diffs and Santa and Claus' knee was velour. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's so true. is he trying to save the environment? Dude, I have no clue. Exactly. I, I have no clue. So he's, speaking he, of making friends dude. in prison. Yes. Uh, <laughs> this is a great snippet, Sean. We're already 45 minutes into the show. <laughs> yep. I, I don't give an F. So, uh, yeah, prison's a great place to make friends, apparently. <laughs> Mike, the situation, Sorrentino, Billy McFarland, who is the Firefest founder, and the celebrity nude hacker are all buddies in prison. This is a true story. So if y'all didn't watch Jersey Shore, Jim Tan, Laundry, like, total Guido, right? Yeah. So Mike, the situation, they all had huge biceps, but his were, like, abnormally huge for his yeah. frame. Why was he in prison? I don't remember, but this He's is in like, jail. Th- this is like the 2019 Millennial Legion of Doom. Mike, the <laughs> situation out together. Firefest. So, so you know, right now they're him working. and the Family Guy dude are in jail together. <laughs> no, okay. that's Seth MacFarlane. You're thinking of Seth MacFarlane. Billy, Billy MacFarlane, MacFarlane was, was the, the Firefest guy. guy. The music oh, festival he was, in the he Bahamas. Was like, he was kind of like he, the broy dude who. Uh, yes. Okay. He, he had his own credit card company, and then he said he was going to bring the best music festival, and it was a total bust. And then how, a lot is, of things. how is Jay? Uh, Who's the nude hacker? Was he the guy that like? All like the uh, things I didn't see. The uh, okay. ones where like the J Lo, not J Lo, <laughs> the Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, there was a, there were oh. celebrities attached with it, but he basically was the guy yes. all the iPhone leaks. Oh, yeah, yes. what a douchebag! Yeah, so like, they put is, them all in the same cell. Well, apparently they're on the same prison and the celebrity unit. Interesting, the celebrity unit. That is a Big Brother TV show waiting to happen. I mean, like put some cameras in there. It's, exactly, it's certainly. Andre agrees. Uh, they're making a uh, the lonely the guys who did the Lonely Island like Andy Samberg and all of them are mm-hmm. making a Fire Fest movie. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they could also make a movie about this little absolutely like evil trifecta going on right now. The golly, that's ridiculous. Wow. Um, so yeah, that one was last, just a quick aside. But yeah, one last just a quick aside. Culture. This is important for me. Yes, and I hope for all of us too, because. It has been 30 years since the release of the original, the OG Game Boy. So Nintendo, April 21st, 1989, came out with the original Game Boy. Did you guys have the original Nintendo? I did. Back when? I did. Did you have one? Nintendo or Game Boy? Both. Well, both. Uh, No, I uh, had Super Nintendo was my first console. That was a great, great console. Great console. Yeah. So, So... Go ahead, Sean. Well, I was just thinking about this. Yeah. Like, I mean, I had older brothers. I have a brother that's about your age, Dre, and, mm-hmm. and uh, like I got all their hand-me-down Game Boys and everything. Naturally. And but I feel like the I really became sentient of video games with the Super Nintendo and the N sixty four. But I want to kick it over to you since you are you started with the Game Boy. Yep. What was the most iconic game growing up? Like, what what were you and all your friends playing on Game Boy on any of these? Um, on on Nintendo, the the, the well, there some were, classics. Right, man. I was gonna say it was Mario, yeah, and, uh-huh. and, com- and Commando. If I'm correct, oh, Commando is a fun one. Okay. You know, because you could use the cheats too. Up down, up down, <laughs> left right, left right. A B select start or B A select start. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. All right, so you could use those cheats on those games, and they would give you like unlimited weapons. You know, <laughs> Mario, you have unlimited fireballs, invincibility. I love how it says Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was going to let it go. Mario! You know what I mean? Hey, Mario! Exactly. You know, that's the name you're Hey, Mario! <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> exactly. Mario! <laughs> so, <laughs> Mario! Those were, those were like the, the games, like, believe it or not, those were the games that everybody wanted to play when you went to somebody's house. Mm-hmm. Then, 
uh, Game Boy for me, it was the the D game, the original game that came out with Tetris. Ooh, Tet- Tetris was like the truth. Tetris is the precursor to our time, Sean. What Tetris is the precursor yeah. to to was it Candy Crush? And yeah. Candy Crush is basically a to me a very stupid psychedelic version of Tetris. Well, like you get games like Doctor Mario became came yep. around because of Tetris. Yep. <laughs> and um, so so yeah, those, those were the for me for Nintendo. Those were those were the those are the games to play. Those are the hits. Birthday, Game Boy. Did you yeah. not play Pokemon? I girl? love Game Boy. Boy, no. Pokemon, probably, Pokemon, Pokemon was hard. Pokemon around, was yeah. after, yeah. Wait, wait, how old are you? Wait, wait, the game. Forty. I thought you said you were twenty-four, like five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> wait, so oh, this man, you, this wait. man came to the league. He, he. I was going to ask what years he played in the NBA. Yeah, yeah. He, you, you were older than Kevin Garnett. Correct. Yeah, KG was coming up. Still well, is. Well, we we came up at the same time, right? But he oh, was, I have so many questions I want to ask was, about. He was a little Garnett. bit. He was a little bit younger than me. I actually played against him. I, I knew his uncle in New York. His uncle, you know, is he short, a nice guy off short the court. Story. He's great. Would he kill your fan? He is no. he a nice guy? Phenomenal, awesome. phenomenal That's human being. So he's, a, he's able to compartmentalize. Yes, the guy, the guy, <laughs> the guy on the court is completely different than the human being. K, KG, KG for yeah. real. KG as a person is one of the best men that I've ever known. That's awesome. Yeah. That's um, know. So his uncle uh, was one of the people who raised me in New York as a basketball player, mm-hmm. and he's always like, "Oh, my nephew, my nephew's in Chicago. Is really good. It's one of these, right?" And I'm. At this time, I'm becoming like the man yeah. in, in whatever. In mm-hmm. New York, you know, I've just won a dunk contest at Rutgers. I'm like, huh, nobody could touch me. I'm sure your, your nephew's all right. <laughs> True story. I go to Riverbank Park, Riverbank State Park to play with him right. or play against him. He's like, oh, my nephew's in town. Come on, you got to come downtown. I go to play against him. I can jump, right? I'm like a Vince Carter-ish Leaper, Ish, yeah. so I can like windmill from the foul line, do things you never seen. Tell the audience how tall you are. Six seven. Okay. So, you know, I I go up. Long story short, to make a to make a dunk, and somebody grabs the ball out my hand and smiles at me in his KG. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so I never forgot that. I was like, whoa, this dude is really long and he can jump. You know, so he's a very special player. Yeah, his hands are first like, and foremost. You know what I mean? Big. You know, he, he he's special. It's something that you, in his prime, like you had to be there, you know, as good as anybody just about, except for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know, KG never had no 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 jump, no jump hook shot. I yeah. love you, KG. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But but um he 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 could rock with probably the best in history right. you know what i mean at that small forward position but um yeah great person man great dude he saw me at roseland uh ballroom and believe it or not tupac was there biggie was there tlc was there d'angelo was there it's all 90s for you kids yeah all 90s silky fine 90s kids. 90s heavyweights yeah um um so and in he he reached over the whole crowd. He had I, I guess like all his boys from Chicago, and he was like, "Yo, Dre, yo, remember when we was playing ball?" Like, great dude, always been a great dude, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Man. Mm-hmm. Nice, yeah. From Nintendo to KG, that's dude, a great way to pop culture right there. <laughs> and I mean, I know a lot of our our listenership, a lot of our ladies usually tune out before sports. But I think you're going to want to listen during sports on this section. Absolutely. Because Drew's oh, yeah. going to be coming in with a lot of personal anecdotes, such as the KG story. So definitely tune in on this. We may even make this like a two-part episode where we yeah. just do a whole thing. Talk about, do, do we, like if we wanted to do, um, I mean, yeah, we can cut it up a little bit. We could definitely do two installments of it. Talk about D-Wade, KG, <laughs> whatever yeah. we want. Yeah. yeah. What what we we want? Want? We're not going to talk about my sports career yeah Dre uh, uh, yeah Dre, we're sure. gonna let you take a back seat here for a moment and uh-huh. let Dom really just <laughs> no problem do you I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you finish okay. why don't you save it for sports Dom save it okay. for sports yeah. save it for right. sports sorry right, because we're moving on yep to TV, TV. man we've got a few Ready. TV stories for you uh, number one <laughs> Tina Fey hilarious lady of comedy she obviously you know her from snl you know her from 30 rock you know her from countless movies and and appearances in in other tv shows um she apparently there's a story going around that a few years back former british prime minister david cameron actually reached out to her wanting to meet up because he was so frustrated at the uh, lack of length on British TV shows, because British television is about six episodes for a lot, like three to six or something like mm. that. And he was so annoyed by the format that he literally wanted Tina Fey to come and convince 
UK filmmaker or uh, showrunners to extend the format. <laughs> no, I hate that. And well, we'll get into that here in a moment. But here's what I'm so so uh, delighted by that you have a a bureaucrat who has power right. and influence, and his <laughs> bottom line is we need to get more TV out there. <laughs> And I don't know how this benefited him. I'm sure there's some kind of monetary backing here. And, that's, what, and, what, what is, that's what prevented Brexit. <laughs> like, and he, had, he had the foresight. <laughs> what, what, what did he know that he knew he had to call Tina Fey? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he's, he's like, he knows Tina, stuff. if only we doubled <laughs> these seasons of Sherlock, then we wouldn't have left the, the Euro. <laughs> Who can stretch out a show longer than it needs to be? Exactly. <laughs> it be Tina Fey. Tina Fey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, Which is kind of an insult to her when you think I know, about yeah, it. Yeah. You know how to overstay your welcome to you. <laughs> so go ahead and do that for we us. We saw the fifth season of Unbreakable <laughs> Kimmy Schmidt. Yeah. <laughs> that that went on five well? seasons? Oh my god. I don't know if it's five. It's somewhere around there, man. So, I mean, uh, I didn't really have a lot of questions for that, but that I just thought, finally, a politician that has the real interest in it. Right, exactly. I will say, this is probably the most serious I will get on this show, is I hate that so much. Why, so well, why is that? Okay, because I think Generally, in America, we have a very bad habit of overstaying our welcome when it comes to I do episodes agree. of TV. Like, there should be no reason other than making money that you should have a series extend 13 episodes just because you need to have 13 episodes. I because think 22 you, is, is excessive. 22, I mean, the show 24, dude, yeah. was like. Oh, man. Which, but, for the record, I wish they would have done one season of 24 that was Jack's day off and nothing happened. Mm. Literally 24 episodes of no activity. That right. sounds like the worst thing in the world. I think it would be a, the best that sounds, throwaway. That, that sounds like your first and last job in The best <laughs> way, just like, especially when Dizzy bought out Fox, if that show was still going on, just that one disgruntled worker that was losing his job. <laughs> You this just you just have. see one episode is just him walking back and forth in Arby's, very upset <laughs> because they have to finish slicing <laughs> the roast the beef. Exact, like, it's a slow burn. Just <laughs> give it twenty three episodes; it'll pay out. <laughs> Larry David's in the bag, and he's like, "Finally, a show." Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I do agree, and I think like I mean, Dom, you and I, and a couple of our buddies, we watch uh, a lot of the HBO shows together. You know, like Barry and I mean, Game of Thrones, real sex, and mm. like the thing is, yes. they're killing it. Like True Detective, they're killing it in eight episodes a season. Mm-hmm. Eight to True. ten. Yeah, Netflix is adopting even that. The they could form. cut though. I really well, believe, but they're long. Episodes. They probably could. They're like long, an hour and a half. Yeah. yeah, and I honestly, I think it a makes it feel like more of an event, and b. I think it's more digestible. Like yep. I can commit to a I think show. Pow- power was the same thing. Right. It's power like, short. It's like eight, eight episodes, but they're like you said, they're like eight episodes mm-hmm. that are like a movie. Yes. Every yeah. episode is like a movie. Like, yeah. Right. And, and again, it's one of those things where it's not a cash grab. It's one of those for the sake of the art. It, it only, it works best having it with a certain set. Like that's what I love about Sherlock for better or worse. Right. Is like it's three episodes a season. Yeah. And they come out every like three or four years. And they're all fantastic. And they're all fantastic. Yeah, exactly. But I can understand an argument that it, it maybe maybe a writer sees this as a as a, a fun challenge, but I can see a stance of that might be a little bit of an awkward territory where it's like either be a movie or be a series, but three to six episodes is hard to really build a story arc. And and maybe that's part of the concern there, is that we need to stretch this out. But I can see both sides. But anyway, that speaking of the mediums that are creating all this content, like HBO, you have Netflix, which seems to be what we're talking about every other week. But I don't know. Selection fatigue is a real thing. You go into, uh, you know, the, the one thing that you'll never hear someone say about Cheesecake Factory is I love it because they give me so many options. Correct. In fact, if anything, it makes it exhausting. Correct. And that's probably the same phenomenon going on Netflix where I spend about 20, 30 minutes trying to figure out what I'm going to watch before just deciding to watch The Office for like the dozen time. Same, same here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But Netflix is aware of that and they have a solution. They are testing out a feature that will automatically play selected shows on their end for you if you don't choose within a certain amount of time. And they're going to start peddling their own content at you. No. And I wonder, that's not the answer. <laughs> do, you, do you think that's going to catch anyone that says no. Shows? no? No, <laughs> the answer is no. People are too picky. Man. Exactly. I just think people are going to exit out the second it starts. Exactly. Like, oh, no, oh no, thank you. No, I don't want to watch this. <laughs> it's like you not want Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Actually, okay, I don't know why I was talking garbage yeah, about it. I love that show you were so much. Like, I was. There was no reason like, for me like to do that. Netflix, I love it. Netflix. Don't push your dope on me. All right. Yeah. yeah. I don't want none of the the the, the, the blue bag. Okay. Right. What <laughs> Netflix does though, so. If if you heard that that new Beyonce documentary just dropped on Netflix, 
Hulu offered Beyonce $85 million. Netflix upped that and bought it. They gave her $110 million. Like Netflix has cash for days where they can do whatever they want. And they're if this flops, dead up to their eyeballs. they are. And they don't Sheesh. give an F. If this thing flops, they're just going to move on to the next one. They've got so much money. They're just doing whatever they want. Like, dude, Ch- they paid Chappelle $50 million a piece for his specials. Yes. Insane. Like, wow. wild. Beyonce. That's mm. insane. So your thing Netflix, but I, I'm not interested. I think in I'm in feature. a I think I'm in a raw line of business. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. We we all should just go <laughs> to streaming services. Yeah, yeah. Well, but dude, the, that, that's what's kind of pissing me off, though. It's like I know Apple is coming out with their own Disney Plus. I mean, it's kind of like it defeats yeah. the whole purpose of like the cord cutting because it's like I have like six different subscriptions to like streaming services. Well, that's what our guest Alex was talking about last week. That ironically, like everything in in business is cyclical. That it's kind of yep. going to evolve. Like it's going to go back to cable. Yeah, where you're yep. going to have all these different services, yep. and someone's going to come along. And be the entity that mm-hmm. t- ties them all together. It's like, do you want Disney Plus and Netflix and let's, ESPN let's, Plus? Let's bundle yeah. it. Let's bundle yeah. it. And we're going to go right back to where we started. Yep. But with better content. Right. Which is interesting. Interesting. But yeah. speaking of quality content on Netflix, Stranger Things has been a home run for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first two seasons have just done gangbusters. And there's a third one on the way this summer, July 4th. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was some controversy that leaked last year in... Last April, the the showrunners and the creators, Mark, uh, Matt and Ross Duffer, the Duffer brothers, were hit with a lawsuit uh, from a Charlie Klesser. And Klesser is not a name that you would recognize, but allegedly the story goes that he was in talks to create a show called Montauk with the Duffer brothers. And he, at a Tribeca Film Festival back in 2014, he pitched the idea for the script that was basically very similar to Stranger Things. And apparently they were in talks to create it together, uh, according to his word. Say it ain't so. And then, uh, you know, as you obviously know, the Duffer brothers went you know, then forward, they made Stranger Things, and they did all that. And this guy came out of the woodwork around the time, this after shortly after the second season aired, uh, Crying Foul, and uh, sued them. Went to a court and the Duffer Brothers create uh, produced emails that predated this guy's claims that uh, alluded to the fact that this might have been an idea in development for a long time. Nonetheless, it wasn't enough for a judge, and so they're actually going to court with this. Matrix and all over again. Matrix I was just thinking all the same thing, man. Over yeah. again. So what do but you guys settled, right? make of yeah. this? I mean, it's one mm. thing where it's like, if they really did that, is it like a really crappy thing that they did? Yes, sure. but they also gave us Stranger Things, and I didn't right. see Charlie Kessler, Kessler. The Montauk series. Yeah, I, I didn't see him give us anything that fantastic, and so I'm like, if you stole it, at least you did something good with it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, you know. so I work in the industry, right? Right. And, and you know, I'm, I'm going to say something that's probably pretty controversial. I love um, controversy. Yeah, but, you know, so... <sighs> There, there are times when, yeah, I had to, I had to blow before that one. There are times when there, there, there are people who create things, and you might know, like, if I'm a TV producer, I might know this guy is so wrapped into his own head, he's never going to get this from idea to actual conception, right? You know, you know, um, and that's the the business, that's the business people. I, I have the. I have the pleasure of being both. I'm actually an artist and a business person. So I understand the artists and they know me and they love me for it. But I also understand the business people. And when I talk to them, you know, I often say, you're right. They're never going to do what they need to do. Let's move it forward. Right. You know, so you have to look at that that angle that business is business. Right. Right. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, if you come to me with a concept and I know that the concept will work, but I also know that you're not going to be able to be a part of making that concept manifest. I'd rather get the concept up and running and pay you later, which it seems to be where they are, are right now. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like, do like proof of concept kind of thing. Exactly. Like that actually works. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, so I'm going to show you it works yeah. at the right. end of the day. You, you would, you know, love you to death, Mr. Artist, but you would never manifest it in your lifetime. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And the so that's what I've is. seen. You need to be protecting your IP. And, Always. And you need to have copy. Like, I mean, it's something that our, our producer, Jim, like he runs a, a media company. Yep. And oftentimes, even if we have an idea of something, yep. you get those NDAs. That's and it. you make sure people. Are- and and uh, if it's an idea, trademark it. Exactly. It's something really simple. 
really cheap. But like you said, um, my one of my lawyers who worked for my entertainment company told me, she said, you know, the most money that I've ever made in court. She said, I don't make money in general. You know, people always think lawyers make big money. They don't. She says, I don't make money from divorces and entertainment law and, and specific things. She says, you know, the most money that I make in court. From broken NDAs Mm -hmm. and from trademark, from trademark infringement. Interesting. That's it. So that taught me at a young age, always have an NDA. And if I do have a product or something or, you know, an idea that turns into a physical product, make sure I get a trademark. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. It's like $150. At most, it might be like $300. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're right. You know what I mean? So same thing. Get an NDA, which you can you can find NDAs anywhere, you know. Get an NDA. If they break your NDA, whatever the the product comes out to be, if it's a three hundred million dollar movie, they have to pay you, you know, one hundred percent of that three hundred million dollar movie. Right. Mm. So get an NDA. That's number one. Number two, if it's a if it's a physical product, get a trademark. Hundred percent. I heard this cool story that uh Gene Simmons wanted Monopoly or the company that makes Monopoly to uh, make a Kiss Monopoly, and they were like, like the board game? "Yeah, and really? like they're like, oh, we're not going to do that." And so he was looking, and I guess he realized he found out that the symbol of a bag with the money sign on it wasn't officially trademarked, and so wow. he bought it. Smart. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, "All right, Smart. guys, so uh, either you make Kiss Monopoly, or we you have right. to pay me every time you want to use this symbol." And now Kissopoly is a real thing. That's wow. Kissopoly. Wow. Smart. God bless capitalism. God, God bless it, Absolutely. Baby. That's God a great Cheers to that. Cheers to that, fellas. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> clink, clink. <laughs> Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Man, we love Game of Thrones. We know this stuff. We, as you guys know from last week, we watched all of The Bachelor and we watch every episode of Game of Thrones. And right. we are here for your first source of sneak peeks, intake, entertainment, everything. And, and sometimes you just need a quick summary, you know, and just need a, a refresher on what happened. Refresh. These episodes are just so jam packed that we've mm. got to we got to break it down for you. Mm. So. We went ahead and did that this week, and we have uh, the episode two from season eight of Game of Thrones Yep, right here for you. And so we're just going to read this plot real quick here. Um, but, J.D., go ahead and get us taken away. And, and spoilers, editor. by the way. I think yeah, you spoiler alert. Spoilers. Spoilers. Spoiler. 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 prepared, spoiler. editor Bobo, why don't you cue up some of that fantastic Woo! music, Woo! and we're going to go ahead and... Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. This week's episode finds an irritated Captain James T. Kirk after realizing he has been tasked with the responsibility of guarding the quadrotrictocale grain supply stored on the K-7 space station. The reason for this being that a paranoid Federation administrator, Officer Barris, is dead, set on winning the rights to developing Sherman's planet. Captain Kirk reluctantly complies when the station administrator agrees to allow Captain Koloth and a ship full of Klingons shore leave on the station, even though Barris is convinced that the Klingons, in typical Klingon fashion, will try to sabotage that very project. Wow. At the same time, Yura brings aboard the Enterprise an adorable and cuddly creature called a Tribble. And it begins multiplying at break at a breakneck pace. The tribbles are harmless, but have voracious appetites and become agitated around Cleons. Lieutenant Spock suspects that the rapidly multiplying tribbles might have infiltrated the grain on the station. This proves to be the case, but old Bones McCoy <laughs> discovers that fortunately. <laughs> The grain was already poisoned, and then the triples are dead. Oh, Bones McCoy. That's <laughs> old Boner McCoy. That's the most popular character on Game of Thrones, old Bones McCoy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fan favorite. <laughs> oh, Bones McCoy. All right. Um, bring us home. Does anyone else feel like this sounds like Rumpelstiltskin? <laughs> we'll we'll nope. This is Game of Thrones. When the surviving triples react in a distressed manner to the presence of Barris's assistant, Darvin, the Enterprise crew discover that Darvin is a Klingon agent. He is arrested, and Scotty rids the Enterprise with thousands of tribbles by beaming them all into Coloth's engine room. 
Wow. Wow. This is really heating up. I don't know what's going to happen. How does HBO afford to have this show on? I mean, it's too big for it's HBO. It's too big. <laughs> it's too big for HBO. All the sex scenes. I will say, oh, wow. you guys did a very good job of cutting around the seven wieners that were in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot about, of gratuitous. There was a lot of wieners. about the tribbles? <laughs> yeah. The, That's another word for wieners. Yes. Yes. It's yep. another word for wiener. So yeah, like Bones in, uh, McCoy apparently has a huge triple, by the way. Huge, huge, huge triple. Feels so yeah, like Family Feud when they're like making Whoopi. That's, that's why <laughs> with his triple. Is making Whoopi. <laughs> Bones McCoy. Good old Bones McCoy. Good old so, uh, Bones. so tune in next week because we're going to recap episode three of Game of Thrones. Could be a good one. There's only six episodes this season, I Oh, believe. boy. So, you need so tune each in of three. these are important. Hey. And we'll definitely give it to you straight. Wow. Hey. Spoilers. Yeah. Spoiler alert, we discussed that. Movies. Movies. That's right. Thank you, Dre. So we're giving you all kinds of important information. And I'd like to pride ourselves at the buzzer that we only give you the information that's necessary. Mm. And never once do we give you stupid anecdotes. It's all relevant. It's all relevant. Yeah. Except this week. So we're talking Star Wars here. I mean... We talk I'm a not, lot of Star Wars on the show. We do. It's an yeah. overrated franchise. We really that, talk a lot about it. That it's, it's people people day. care about. And yeah. this is not something that I think any Star Wars fan asked for, but here it is. Uh, Mark Hamill, the guy who famously played Luke Skywalker, and among other roles, like he voiced the Joker in the Batman animated series, and he's voicing Chucky in the remake <laughs> of Child's Play. Yeah, um, according to Mark Hamill on Twitter, uh, someone asked him if Luke Skywalker died a virgin. And he told them that Luke did, in fact, lose his virginity a long time ago and did not die a virgin. Dude, that doesn't... Okay. The, last Jedi. the Tauntaun was dead. It doesn't count. <laughs> so I was actually going to ask you guys, <laughs> who in this galactic universe did Luke lose his virginity to? This is the nerdiest... <laughs> Let me think about that This is the second. nerdiest thing... <laughs> Like like some somewhere. Wait, no, he didn't lose his virginity. <laughs> like somewhere walking around is a half Luke Skywalker, half metal hand. <laughs> his tribble is his, just his, his tribbles. His tribbles are all over. His yeah. tribbles are wrong. So I do love the fact that there are people who are literally debating the master debating the celibacy master debating the celibacy Luke's of Skywalker. a fictitious. Wizard swords, like laser swordsmen. Why? Why? <laughs> Who cares? I like that this wasn't like he came out to announce it, like J.K. Rowling does with yes. Harry Potter stuff. It Actually, was like he was gay. <laughs> yeah. Turns out, exactly. turns out, <laughs> Luke Skywalker lost his virginity to Dumbledore. <laughs> 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 what is this? <laughs> <laughs> That's how the trailer starts. Oh. I'll tell you, man. No, uh, I mean, lightsabers and wands. It's very foul. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> and speaking of stupid Star Wars news, oh, George Lucas is something? really off the off his rocker here. So he came out He's at the, uh, no, the uh, Star Wars <laughs> celebration this past month uh, in Colorado or whatever. There was a panel, and Lucas just <clears throat> unprompted told everyone that his favorite character of all time, and I think he was serious, was Jar Jar Binks from Episode One. <laughs> And I just think, like, this guy's either trolling everyone or he really is just... No, he's trolling. Dude, ridiculous. Okay, that's 100% what it is. Like, I don't know if you guys remember when he signed over uh, Lucas Films to uh, uh, Disney back in the day. And there was that picture of him and, like, Ed Asner sitting at the table. And he had, like, that look on his face of, like, whenever you watch Making a Murder and it's, like... You know, like when like the convicted person like sees their family in court for the first time after they were accused of what they did, that kind of like guilty look. Mm-hmm. It's like the look he had in his face when he was signing over the rights to Lucas Arts, <laughs> and like it seemed to me he's like, you know what, I'm gonna burn this mother down. <laughs> I mean, a- this guy gives no f's at this point, and he's probably just trolling everyone. No, exactly. What a deep cut there, Jar Jar right. Binks. Jar Jar Binks. I do. I do feel bad for that actor. I think uh, I looked it up. His name is uh, Ahmed. Uh, best. But that guy got like death threats and letters from again, Aww. Star Wars nerds are over the line in so many ways. They need to chill. I just think like chill, y'all, y'all need to chill, chill the crap out man. Like it's, it's a fictitious character. It's a fictitious character. Just yeah. be cool. Luke Skywalker is boning every chick <laughs> and Jar Jar Binks is not the greatest character on the show. Yeah, hot take. No. But speaking of fans that might be overly obsessed with. I, honestly, can I, can I say something Please. on that? Honestly, the, 
the the greatest character in Star, Star Wars, believe it or not, is Darth Vader. Yeah. If you know, if anybody doesn't know, Darth, mm-hmm. Darth Vader. Hot take. R- right. Darth Vader was undefeated at taking over the galaxy. You True. know, no, let's really look at that. Uh, yeah, he sold his soul to the devil, unfortunately for him. But <laughs> at the yeah. same time, yeah. he lived out his dream of actually yeah. taking over the entire galaxy. You know, you know. So uh, he, he was a great character. I mean, you can't beat it. James Earl Jones' voice. Mm. They said the original guy who played him was like seven foot. You, you know, you have to put all these things into the, you know, the 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 mask the the, that they made. The mask that was that they actually made was after the uh, Nazi uh, mask, yeah, or whatever. The helmet, yeah, the SS helmets, and uh, it's they, actually terrifying. Exactly, and they put like gas mask on him on his face, mm. you know, to make that original yeah. mask. And of course, you know, the guy's seven foot. Right. Just think about it. Like, think about if you really walked into an entity that even looked like that. I'm six, seven. Oh, you'd be intimidated. For sure. That's what I'm trying to say. You'd right. be like, this dude has to be like a living demon. <laughs> like, You know what I mean? Like, 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 like death on wheels. So and you have people say Jar Jar Binks. Is their favorite no, character? No, there's no. That's what I'm. People that's my don't point. Say there's, that. George there's, Lucas said right. That. There's no. Com- there's no comparison. True. True. There's, yeah. no, there's no comparison. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a fantastic point. And fun fact, Darth Vader was is my favorite character of all franchise as well. Just because as a kid, like mm-hmm. I just really like the color red. He had a red lightsaber, so I was like, this guy's yeah. dope. Uh, <laughs> He's got to be cool. Yeah. So Bones fans, McCoy. fans get overly obsessed with nerdy Bones. stuff Bones. all the time. Bones, Bones. McCoy. And uh, no exception here is Dom. You're moving to Wisconsin. You might actually meet this guy. But there was a man in Wisconsin who broke is had now holds the Guinness Book of World Records. His name is Steve uh Rupel, I think. But he holds the Guinness Book of World Records. Rupel. For total Rupel, Rupel move. About <laughs> what a uh, it's a record oh for most viewings of a movie in the theaters. So Steve Rupel uh oh, holds the record, the Guinness Book of World Records. He saw Captain Marvel a hundred and sixteen times in theaters. You guys are taking a piss. You guys, you white You guys made me pour out the whole bottle because I was laughing. <laughs> what you just heard there was unadulterated stream of urine from Dre. Hey, remember when you worried about me coming on the show, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Really fell off this thing. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're going to scrap this whole episode. Oh, okay. uh, no, well, no. so there you have it. Better Bobo. We don't need to talk about Marvel. Captain Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> we, will touch Captain on, Marvel. we will touch on this really quickly. Avengers Endgame comes out this week. Uh, nice. The 26th. Hot in here. And is it hot in here? This is probably going to be the biggest movie of 2019. The only one that could be bigger is Star Wars. Yep. Um, I think this will be the biggest one. It's It'll probably make easily $2 billion yeah. box office. Uh, so that being said, do you guys have any... Let's nerd out a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But do you have any crazy theories? So this is the end of contracts for the likes of Robert Downey Jr., mm-hmm. who plays Iron Man, Chris Evans, who played Captain America. Uh, this might be the last run for guys like Thor. What do you think is going to happen in this one? Real quick, any big things, big takeaways? I think... That the the I think that right so no nah, I don't know I haven't looked up I want a disclaimer I haven't looked up any trailers I haven't you know sourced any information but I think that they you know going to go back in time the only thing that makes sense to me is that they go back in time right and undo for, everything exactly yeah and they undo everything um, snapping with that being said I do I do I think it's going to be a good movie because of the basic bones of it sure. or that's already built Bruce but McCoy. correct <laughs> bones <laughs> McCoy yeah. but 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 I do I do think that um some things are going to be missing you know I I, I feel like Stan Lee I, I feel like part of the reason that all of these movies were great is because the the actual creator of the original yeah. content was able to um, and he talked about it in the past. He was like, when I saw something wrong, I was like, nah, that's not exactly he could, how he could correct. It. There you go. That's not exactly how Spider-Man will move. Yeah. You know, no, that's not exactly how Iron Man would 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 feel mm-hmm. after yeah. losing his heart. Yeah. You know, he talked about it. So I think that specific things are going to be missing from yeah. this movie. Honestly, the specific details that us true comic nerds yeah. are going to be like, ah, oh, the man, they kind of got that wrong. Right. However, I think it's still going to be a decent movie because this is the punctuation 
for yep. a very long sentence. Yep. It's been going on for the last decade. Yep. And I, I mean, Infinity War, I think, was probably one of the most incredible uh, amalgamations of, of properties mm-hmm. in, in one film. Yeah. And this just ends a whole huge saga. And honestly, do you think that people are just going to be done with superhero movies for a little bit after this? Probably. I, I think, I think, it, I think it's okay to let it Burn breathe out. for a while. Burn yeah. Out. yeah. Just let it breathe. It's natural. End it well. I hope exactly. they end it well, and I hope they let it simmer. Just, Same with Star Wars. It, Both yeah. these, let's let it so let we can move be. on with the podcast. Wait five yeah. years, bring them back. Because we talk a lot about it, but let's let's let it simmer. I agree. Dom? I agree. That's what they, they should do. I, but. Maybe, maybe I think, here's the thing, man. I think uh, a lot of these companies, especially Disney, right, who owns both of them, uh, I think it's fair whatever movie they make in the MCU or star Wars, regardless if we think they should make it, we're going to go see it in theaters. Yeah. And it's like Stockholm. I mean. It is. Dude. And it's, well, it's one of those like, like, dude, I see every DC movie in theaters. and you know, it's not going to be good. Yeah. But it's like, they have my money already. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. I like to think the best that like, they probably should, Hey, let's just hold off for a bit. Yeah. But I think we were talking yesterday about one of the things that was great um, again, the prequels for the most part were fantastic, obviously. Yeah, but, but one of the things that was special perfection. about them was, dude, like over the span of a decade, like three movies came out, and yeah. so when they dropped, it was like a huge event. And uh, with them coming out every single year, it's a little bit, you know, not quite as special, and kind of feels a little bit uh, like they're taking my baby. Right. Yeah. No, I get that, and that that is something to be said is. Like I think fan fatigue is going to kick in for sure with, and it already has with Star Wars. I think yeah. Disney's like pulled back because they were throwing like two movies every year at us, and then with Avengers, I think it it was a matter of expectations. Like we expected there to be three superhero movies a year, mm-hmm. and then Star Wars it was such an event. To your point, uh, like every decade you got a new one, and so when it happened, it was so monumental. Mm-hmm. And then once you start getting every, it's like if you had Christmas like three times a year. Exactly. Well, so on Christmas, you'd be you'd be over it. Yeah, totally. So I'd love to take a break, and I'd love for you know, especially if you get proper like what I would love to see from Disney is them gamble on uh, obscure film ideas. Like mm-hmm. they have the money. Like clearly, like they're, they're good. They're going to have the properties go on Disney Plus and all that. Like I'd love them pump, see them pump out some indie films mm-hmm. that normally wouldn't necessarily see the light of day. Right. But now that like money is no object. Like uh, what was that movie? Um, the movie with the with the guy with the tiger. Oh, Life, Life of Pi. That that was a great yeah. movie. Was totally. that Disney? That was no. Disney. Uh, I don't know if it was Disney, I mean, but it, was, it, was, I think it might be Warner Brothers. But it was definitely. It was a great story that wouldn't normally have been made. That's what I'm saying. Because it's not a franchise. Right. Yeah, I agree. That that was a great movie. You know, just yeah. thinking, like you said, like Disney, of course, has the budget and the reach to do things like that. Yeah. You know? But again, I think... Because, of course, the tiger was... I'm just thinking because the tiger was pure, uh, you know... Uh, metaphor CG yeah right. oh that's you yeah right <laughs> <laughs> there was no tiger in the movie you imagined it <laughs> exactly the tiger was inside all of us yeah that's right uh, all, of, all of us have a tiger inside of us yeah dude tiger I, again, maybe it's just my pessimism with like big companies like Disney where I'm like I would love for them to take risks on movies that are not going to be box office smashes right but I'm just kind of like just for the quality of the film yeah for quality of the yeah. film like, okay like have y'all seen the, that movie The Lobster yeah Dude, one of my favorite movies of all time. Not because it's even a fantastic movie. It's just so weird. It's different. And it's so, because of it, it's so original. And I, same thing with Swiss Army Man. I'm like, there's something like yeah. incredible about seeing Daniel Radcliffe fart for two hours yeah. as a dead corpse. What? And, but, what am I missing? And, and here's the thing. If <laughs> I, I made, seen this movie? Well, no. yeah, it's, dude, it's actually a pretty I think it's missing. It's on some fine, dude. I zoned out for a minute. If and I, I was like, no. Oh. The pro- <laughs> like, I agree. And I think the thing is, all of us are artists. And we're all kind of coming yeah. at it. Whether or not we mean to, we're probably coming at it with a little bit of a highbrow expectation of like, this is quality art and this is what we want to see. Mm-hmm. But the average movie goer isn't looking for something that is new and innovative 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 they're looking for something that is recognizable exactly that's a popcorn and that's what flick, disney does and that's what they know yeah. they, yeah. they they, yeah. they yeah. disney well, does and they do the it well opposite. Totally. right they they always find a big star and you know somebody who you you recognize and that's how that's the way they go right 
And so that's why you're getting all these Transformer movies. Like, they're awful, but exactly. worldwide, oh, they're so bad. people recognize Transformers. They're selling. And well, and they're, sell, they're, selling they're, they're selling nostalgia, too, especially yes. in like the 30s and 40s Correct. something. Correct. Yeah. They were talking about, I know this is completely off topic, but right, this is this is what I do, right? They were talking about bringing out a Thundercats movie, and, yeah. and that made me excited and very, also very, very anxious at the same time because I love the Thundercats. And it's I was property like, you care about. You get us it, and I was like, you can't mess this up, guys. Right. You can't mm-hmm. mess this up. Totally. And that you've seen countless examples of beloved properties yeah. that just got poo pooed out. Exactly. And, yeah. Poo-pooed. There was one that I was so excited about. It was, it was supposed to have been made like four or five years ago. With Johnny Quest, but with Zach Efron as Johnny Quest, mm-hmm. and uh, huh. The Rock as Race Bannon, huh. and, uh, and that, would have loved that to see fun. that come. To, yeah, but then again, also they could have made it totally crappy, like the Dora the Explorer movie that's coming out. But the, the, the saw that, like, yeah. with The Rock, though, they're willing to make like with The Rock. Still Kevin Hart, dude. The Rock prints money, dude. It'd be fine. Like, yeah, it was like the, the Jason ads. Stratham yes. Rock, like Fast and Furious franchise is coming out. That's the most ridiculous trailer I've ever seen in my life. At the same time, I'm like, I kind of want to see it. Exactly. Well, it's kind of. And actually, I'm, I was about to pick up John Wick. I'm John Wick is pure. John Wick's awesome. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Art House. Don't you dare. I, diss dude, John I Wick. love John, I love John Wick. Wick. Anyways, we're definitely gonna have to turn this into two part. Don't touch my dog. Um, I'm thinking I'm back, <laughs> and I'm thinking that I'm thinking I'm another back. episode of the Buzzer will be back right after this. Wow, that was nice. Thank you. Good job. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna do something a little unconventional this week. Yes, yeah, a little razzle dazzle. We're gonna outro here, but but hang on, hang on, hang on, because why, JD? Well, we've got more. We've got a whole another episode for you this week. It's dropping mm, yeah, tomorrow it's, Friday. It's dropping so, after this one. So you should definitely listen to both. But if you're into sports, if you're not into sports, it doesn't we talk matter. about, yes, life, magnets, follow your dreams, uh, just everything you can think of that is inspirational to us and to you guys. It all ties back with it's It's a moving it's great. episode. Dre's yes. going to open up. Dom's going to tell a funny story. Dr. Dre is here. <laughs> Dom is here. Um. Yes. So tune into part two of episode fifteen. Yes, it's going to be great. It's going to be great, and it'll, we'll, we'll release it hopefully tomorrow, if not the day after. But it'll happen soon. We'll let yep. you know, and it's going to be a good one. But for right now, we're going to sign off. Enjoy, and, guys, and yes. enjoy, and then we'll we'll see you next time. All right. Bye bye. Peace. My wife. <laughs>